today in the Nerdy Gritty, with the 2020 Olympics being moved to 2021, we ask, how could video games replace the Olympics? What more world is the beers inside it? Just another hopeless addict. Well, it makes a man insane. If the drums don't get you, the guitars will. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nerdy Gritty, where we delve deep into the details of pop culture. I am your uh, Hyru- Hyrulean representative, Fox. I'm the 100-meter Dez. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Thanks. Uh, okay, <laughs> stop what you're thinking uh, or doing or talking. We need to talk about the greatest event in actual Olympics history. Oh, no. Okay. This has nothing to do with gaming. This has nothing to do with okay. pop culture. <laughs> I need to tell you this story, though. We're going to talk about the men's marathon from the 1904 Summer Olympics. 1904. 1904. When I hear crap about the early 1900s when we have just enough technology to be able to accurately like catalog the stuff that went on, then you hear about things like the syrup flood that killed people. <laughs> and like the the craziest garbage. Here that we happened. go. Nope, nope. Speaking of crazy garbage. I'm literally, there's, I mean, you can find a story, a million stories about this. I'm just reading from the Wikipedia here. The men's marathon at the 1904 Summer Olympics in St. Louis took place on August 30th over a distance of 24.85 miles. Starting off, not marathon distance. No. (laughs) That is about two miles short, a mile and a half short of an actual marathon. 26.2 is an actual marathon. But that's just the start. That's just the start right there. Don't even get caught up on that. How long is it going to be? I don't know, 100 yards? I don't know. What's a marathon? (laughs) That's kind of what it felt like, though. Okay, 32 (laughs) athletes representing four nations. This was the Olympics? This is the Olympics. There's four nations in the the marathon, (laughs) but 32 competitors. How? Like, okay, let me look at it. It's it's America. (laughs) It's 29. (laughs) It's USA. uh, It's Cuba. It's Greece, and is that no? What's the other one? What is that one? Um, South Africa, South Africa. All right. Is the I was like that's a that looks like an English flag. Oh right, because South because it kind of is. Anyway, uh, yeah. So four. Okay, we're already very basics. We're already weird. Yes. Thirty-two athletes representing four nations competed. Only fourteen finished. What? Less than half of the people that ran it finished. Was there a fist fight? Oh, I'm so excited to hear this. <laughs> <sighs> Don't even try to guess. Don't even try to guess. <laughs> St. Louis organizers started the marathon in the afternoon. Temperatures, first of all, that's weird. It's a marathon. Weird. Yeah. Temperatures during the event reached 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa. And humidity reached, this is St. Louis in oh, August. No. Humidity was in the 90s, making the heat index during the marathon 135 degrees Holy Fahrenheit. Holy crap. The race began and ended in the stadium, but the rest of the course was on dusty country roads with race official officials riding in vehicles ahead of and behind the runners, creating dust clouds. <laughs> Breathe this, suckers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just, why? Stop it. The only source of water for the competitors oh my was a well at about the 11-mile mark. What? James E. Sullivan was a chief organizer of the Olympics. I can't go upstairs without needing a drink of water. <laughs> and decided to allow only one water station on the 25.85-mile course, even though it was conducted in 90-degree heat. Uh, his ostensible reason was to conduct research on purposeful dehydration, what? even though dehydration is potentially fatal. This is during the heroic <laughs> era of medicine when we did stupid. This is like the dumbest name for meaning, dude, we did some horrible things to human beings and we learned a lot. We really did <laughs> learn a crap ton of stuff. Oh man. It's like, wow. it's like, what's his name? Uh, Edison killing some elephants yes. or something so, like that. Oh, you are terrible people. The marathon and... Uh, why are you doing dehydration research at the Olympics? The Olympic marathon. You're not. What? You're a bad scientist. Yes. The marathon ended with the worst ratio of finishers and by far the slowest winning time. <laughs> Thirty minutes slower than the second slowest winning time Holy in history. Crap. All right. All right. That's only. That's the amuse bouche. 
That's that is just a, a little sampler before we get into the main course. There's a little flavor. Mm-hmm. Now for the main course. I want you to pay attention. I feel like I'm reading a Munch Squad right now. I want you to pay attention to the f- this this part of what I'm reading. The first to arrive at the finish line was Fred Lors. What stands out to you about that sentence or that part of the sentence? The first to arrive at the finish line. He didn't finish. They didn't say. No, he got to the finish line. No, no. He, he crossed it. Oh, okay. He did. He did. Uh, Wasn't the winner, though. Oh. <laughs> he had actually dropped out of the race after nine miles and hitched a ride back to the stadium in a car, waving at spectators and runners alike during the ride. <laughs> Giving them the finger on the way. <laughs> when the car broke down at the 19th mile, <laughs> couldn't go 10 miles, Lors re-entered the race and jogged across the finish line. No way. <laughs> after being hailed as the winner, he had his photograph taken with Alice Roosevelt, daughter of President Theodore <laughs> Roosevelt and was about to be awarded the gold medal when his subterfuge was revealed upon being confronted. He immediately admitted his deception. And despite the claims, he was joking. The AAU, which is something the amateur athletic union responded by banning him for a year, a year, a year. That's it. This guy actually went on to win the 1905 Boston marathon. Say, it's the Olympics. <laughs> hey, look, man, it was a weird, wild time. <laughs> Uh, we had, like, planes were just becoming yeah. a thing. Yeah, it's getting news here. Yeah. You know that um, 5G is something that's coming. And it's the fifth of the Gs. Yeah, for those of us who uh, do some mobile gaming or sure, sure. on our phones, you know, you, you could be really excited about it. But also there's been some... Uh, some question about what 5g really is oh obviously it's some, it's chinese spy yeah juice, juice well the good news is is that there was something called the uh 5g bio shield it was or it is i guess technically oh man i already US, hate it a usb jump drive a usb stick that was quote recommended by a member of the glastonbury town council's 5g advisory committee Okay. Which this Glastonbury. Is a, yeah, okay. This is a, a, a British. The old old Britland. thing here. Three hundred and fifty dollars. <sighs> Turns out it's a hundred and twenty-eight gig- megabytes USB stick, and that's it. <laughs> it's a hundred and twenty-eight meg it's USB the, jump drive. It's like tech snake oil. And so, this is one of those things where they get found out, and th- here's their ad. Their ad. The 5G BioShield makes it possible thanks to a uniquely applied process of quantum nanolayer technology <laughs> to balance the imbalanced electric oscillations arising from all electric fog induced by all devices, such as laptops, cordless phones, what? LAN tablets, etc. It brings balance into the field at the atomic and cellular level, restoring balanced effects to all harmful ionized and non-ionized radiation. It is the most ridiculous tech <laughs> that jargon. Is, that sounds like really bad dialogue from a crappy <laughs> sci-fi exactly movie. exactly what that is. You know how a lot of, like, reunions have been happening lately? Yeah. A lot of, like, cast reunions. Yeah. Some of them are kind of cool. There was, like, a Back to the Future one. There was a, uh, let's see, there was a, uh, let's see, Goonies happened. Uh, Splash, everybody's favorite Tom Hanks movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this Sunday, though. Josh Gad, who is doing this series called Uni- uh, Reunited Apart, is bringing together the Lord of the Rings cast. Ooh. <laughs> and I'm so excited. Yeah, no kidding. So there's a trailer for it, and it's amazing. Um, and I, I won't just describe it, because that's boring. Go watch it, though. Find the trailer for Lord of the Rings Re- Reunited Apart. It's really great. I'm going to list for you who's who's already revealed to be a part of this. Oh, no. Not Sean Bean, because if he dies in this, he's dead for real. <laughs> How? What a way to go, though. <laughs> All right, here we go. Sean Astin, Elijah Wood, Dominic Monaghan, Billy Boyd, Orlando Bloom, Ian McKellen, Peter Jackson, and Fran Walsh, two of the writers and right. obviously director, Viggo Mortensen, Andy Serkis, Sean Bean, Carl Urban, Miranda Otto, Miranda Otto who is a- Aowen, uh, John Rice Davies and That's Liv the Tyler. Right there. there you go. Then. And Liv Tyler. That's insane. All of them, including Ian McKellen, is on this. Man, I'm so excited. I'm just gonna read you the headline of this article. 
One thing that we don't talk about a lot on this uh, podcast is reality TV. Yeah, for a reason. For our pop co- for our pop culture podcast, we don't talk about reality TV a lot. I'm just going to read you the headline of this. Ready? Okay. 15 men will compete to impregnate a 41-year-old woman I hate in it. new stop reality ta- please show, stop talking about Labor of Love. Please stop. Please stop talking about this. <laughs> I hate it. It's the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> My ears are, are... I wish I could stop them from 15 working 15 men will compete to impregnate a 41 year old woman in new reality show labor of love that i don't want to know more about this <laughs> i'm thinking of like well questions but then at the end of the day i don't want to know the answers to any of them <laughs> because there's ways that the questions can make things better but there's also no, ways that the questions can make though. things much there's not much though worse. there's not ways that can make it better so are you going to tell me more yeah, about oh, absolutely. this? Absolutely. Yes, of course I am. Oh, my goodness. Okay. This might be my last episode, guys. <laughs> Despite what the title makes it sound like. Wait, what? They are not all trying to impregnate her. They're not all actually. Okay. So it's a her. win the chance to have the opportunity. Yes. It's not just, <laughs> you know, what, what it sounds like it, it is. is. Exactly. The title makes it sound terrible, uh, but clickbait, but like, it also sounds terrible it anyway. Like the bachelor, but whoever. So here's the thing though. It's specifically to get her pregnant. That literally there is no obligation, no marriage, nothing like that. It is her getting to know these men as essentially who's going to be the sperm donor. Anyway, Fox, what have you been up to, man? <laughs> uh, a few. Th- I've been okay. I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Origins, just trying to go for the platinum. So I'm not going to talk yeah. about that. What I another game I have been playing though, Snow Runner. Yeah, you were telling me about that. Here's the thing. That's I, the. It's a. It is a. Uh, in depth, off road sim, off roading oh, sim. Oh, okay. But in the set, not like ATVs, not like dirt bikes, like powerful trucks that can drive through mud oh yeah you were telling me it about is that. it is a sequel to mud runner which was a fully realized version of a game called spin tires you're basically dropped i mean you have lots of big maps and lots of places to go but you're dropped in a rural location with lots of you know it's like a flood just happened right all of these places are super muddy and you're here to help out the community so basically you start with this vehicle and then you drive around, and it's kind of an open world, and you find materials, you find new trucks, you complete tasks by bringing materials to other places because you can drive through these muddy roads, and other people can't. And it's r- wonderful. I watched, for the first time ever, Thumbelina. So it's on Disney+. Plus. Okay. It was a Fox movie. All right. It's an animated movie in the 90s, but it was... Uh, since Disney owns Fox now, they put oh, it on. Oh, yeah. So this is not a Disney movie, to be clear. It's just owned by Disney. It's owned by Disney now. It's not good. <laughs> like, I remember watching it and thinking to myself, it's so clear that this is the golden age of Disney when they're trying to, like, Disney's putting out all these gems like Lion yeah, King. Yeah, cla- forever yeah. classics. Yeah, Al- Aladdin, all these other things. And everyone else is trying to do something like that. Yeah, It's about... Thumbelina falling in love at first sight with the fairy prince. The two of them fall in love with each other. Okay. And they're going to get married the very next day. But then Thumbelina gets kidnapped over and over again <laughs> by one person. And then she gets free from then. And then gets taken by another one. And what? he gets free from then. gets taken by another one. And everyone's just like, no, now you're going to marry me. What? She's essentially trafficked. Also watch Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, which was a 1960s, I think, yeah. um, movie with Angela Lansbury mm-hmm. and uh, about uh, like a witch in training. And but it's during World War II, and so she sent some kids to like, for her to take care of in her country house. But that movie, on the other hand, was delightful. Okay, it was classic, and you know, it was, I would give it a six and a half, a seven. But it was just so lighthearted and fun. And, and my does kids anybody loved get kidnapped it. repeatedly? Nobody gets That's kidnapped. That's good. Repeatedly That's usually a good thing, it. unless you're if you're making a kids movie. Uh, repeated my... kidnappings are bad. Uh, I watched Never Surrender, a Galaxy Quest documentary. Okay. There's a whole documentary about the, the... making of and the legacy of the movie Galaxy Quest. Have I've, you seen Galaxy Quest? I have seen Galaxy Quest. It's, it's funny to me that Galaxy Quest is something that exists because of the legacy of something else. Yes. 
and it, now it itself is it is considered its to legacy. be honestly the best star trek movie <coughs> it is i by by a large part of the fans actually really? in star trek canon really? obviously it's a wink in wink fanon? because it's not actually star trek um, and so the documentary is essentially just about the creation of it, the casting of it, I had no idea. the legacy it so of it. It's huge. fairly recent. It came out like a year ago. Yeah, but it's a beloved movie, especially in the Star Trek um, community. I started reading the fifth Witcher book. Yeah. Um, Lady of the Lake. Lady of the, of the Lake. And um, I'm about 100 pages in and astonished as to just how much I'm struggling to get into yeah. this book. Yeah. It is. The last one's weird. They're all so weird, but this one. Here, here's why I'm frustrated. Yeah, and tell it's me. just a really weird writing choice. We have come to the finale of the series. Our characters have all been left in very precarious positions uh -huh. or in very, like, uh, very what's going to happen next cliffhanger positions. Sure. And the book begins. With two brand new characters, which we know nothing about, and the tit one uh, uh, a lady of a lake, yeah, and her apprentice, and her apprentice, and we are just kind of learning about uh, them and the apprentice. She's not really an apprentice as much as a helper, but she dreams, yeah, and her dreams are sometimes about Siri and kind of prophetic Geralt. about real yeah. life things, and we so we get very small like two paragraph glimpses into what's happening with Geralt or what has happened to Yennefer or Ciri or right, whatever else right but other than that it's about the the life of these two characters and like Nimune and Cody Wampus or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could, yeah. never could figure but, out how to uh, say could that. Wirmer, could could Windemir or yeah, something, something like that. that. Anyway, uh it's about them for like 40 pages yeah and it's like why and then after that we finally get to Geralt and it's about him spending the winter in this town for like the next 60 pages yeah it's about him just that like hanging out glorious where there's like the night and yeah I'm okay I'm yeah. remembering as you're talking legitimately about it. just him hanging out and chill because he can't leave because it's winter and he's snowed in and this is a time before cars and whatever else so yeah once you're snowed into a place you can't leave yeah you're literally well, stuck you're there. spending your winter there yeah and so it's him having a drink with a friend and talking about women and stuff like that. And I'm a hundred pages into this book yeah. and it has progressed the story. Zero percent avatar. Last time we the talked last about of avatar, the Airbenders. last time we talked about avatar, I said, it's good. I'm really enjoying it. I compared it to that Rapunzel TV show, right. cartoon, whatever else. And 99% and of the people who like, uh, who like avatar then hated you uh i will i will say i still stick with that for season one i 100 oh, percent for season sure. one sure everything changed when the, the one, fire nation attacked. when the one episode <laughs> hit zuko alone i don't know what it is about this one episode but i can tell you that the production must value must have gone up they must have gotten i don't know if just the windfall of money from Season one hit them around I'm sure that the viewer, episode. The viewership, yeah, that showed, yeah. hey, this is popular. Yeah, whatever happened around that episode, but the quality and everything made this ridiculous leap. And then after that, I am just been hooked on yeah. this show. All right, hey, let's get. We've gone way long. Let's we'd get down say to the that nerdy every gritty. time. No, we really have gone long this time. Not compared to last week. We that's are true. Never going to go long again. <laughs> anyway, let's get down to the nerdy gritty. Hey, before we do that, we just want to let you guys know that if you're listening to this right now, you just listened to a shortened version of our conversation. We actually had a 50-minute conversation before this about all kinds of how crazy we do. things. Yeah, that's how we do. Uh, we talk about a lot of fun stuff. After this, of course, is entirely unedited. We leave the nerdy-gritty focus subject entirely whole but if you love listening to us banter if you love listening to the things we've been talking about our thoughts on tv shows and whatever else we really want to encourage you to ch check out our patreon that's patreon.com slash des and fox and for our middle tier our five dollar tier you can get what's called the director's cut of the nerdy gritty it's an unedited version which usually has anywhere from 20 to 30 sometimes 40 minutes of content that's been edited out of fox and i chatting about all kinds of different things 
also gives you access to our Discord. It gives you a lot of content early or even exclusive content like the Bargain Bin, which is up there only for patrons right now. If that's something you can do, we'd really appreciate that to head over, check out patreon.com slash Fox. But if that's not something you can do, we always appreciate it when you like, share, when you tell people about it, spread the word because we don't pay for ads or anything like that. So your voice is what gets this podcast out there. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Let's get down to that nerdy gritty. So if you haven't heard the, which I didn't hear, I, I was unaware until like a three weeks ago, the 2020 Olympics have been postponed to 2021. Which is a big deal. It's obviously because of the uh, coronavirus, the COVID-19 right. pandemic. Um, it's probably the biggest thing that has been affected by that, I would say. It's the farthest reaching. Uh, so, yeah. One year down the line, they're going to do that. But I think there's a great opportunity here. What we're going to talk about is how could video games take the place of the Olympics? Yeah. Now, let's let's set some like some ground rules or just some parameters here. We're not talking about, uh, uh, we're talking about what can video games do as a to kind of mirror the Olympics in like a global event that has all these different events and not just, you know, League of Legends World Cup and this. Right. You know, those we things. We are not happen. talking esports. Yeah, what yeah. Esports things could be in the Olympics. We mean in the place of Olympic events, how can video games replace that? Yeah, and so I think there's a lot to talk about, but. Every year, the Olympics, or every four years, the Olympics start with the opening ceremonies, which are part of it's just the procession of countries, the the delegations come in, but there's also a really big like show that's put on that often reflects the host country's kind of deal. Uh, so first of all, I'm actually I didn't think about this. Where would this take place? Where do you think the where do you think the the 2020 gaming Olympics take place? Oh, see, in my brain, this was because of COVID, and it was everybody's in their own home. This is all okay. live streamed to oh, or whatever okay. else. Yeah. Like all right. So we went different directions. Yeah, on we did this. go different okay, directions. Okay, I'm on excited. This. For me, the opening ceremonies was gonna be something like have you seen either the makeup videos or like the stunt people fighting videos where it's like a five second clip of them punching the camera oh, and then and it then cuts somebody to the next else person falling it away. It goes from around it. the world yeah. to different Ooh. I would want it to be like somebody like ninja grabbing the torch and then like putting it toward oh, the camera dang. and then pulls away and it's Dr. Disrespect and he like and then he goes to a different camera and like hands it passes the torch and it's just you know going all the way until finally it ends up at um I don't know where we would light the final torch but a torch place uh <laughs> Japan yeah I just decided Japan it's Japan Nintendo. I mean that's where the Olympics were going to be held anyway so yeah so that's that's where that's going to be held. Yeah. So that that's I mean I like that the torch thing of going across to different streamers. Uh, I definitely went in a different direction of like, I was just imagining live events. All right. Okay. I'm excited because now yeah. yeah. Got oh man, we got things. some really good stuff. Um, my my opening thing was a lot more traditional. I guess it would just be different. I mean, it would still be more global, but it would be like a fireworks and you know kind of thing that just yeah. represent different different countries would bring in. And have a little display or a big display, of course, of their like the games that represent. Oh, their man, country. you could have like actual Olympians come in, but dressed like cos- cosplayers. Cosplay. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah the procession is all cosplayers. In. And so like of games from their country. Link comes in and like he pulls a bow, but it's an Olympic bow and arrow. Guy, oh, man. And he shoots something awesome. And then it's, you know, Master Chief shows up in a warthog. And shoots people. And it's a racing <laughs> Olympian. Is, nah, that, is racing an Olympian thing? <laughs> there's lots of races in the Olympics. What are you talking about? No, like car racing, vehicle racing. I don't know. I'm not yeah, sure. I don't know either. Anyway. But it could it, that would actually transition pretty easy. There's a lot of like fantasy type things that they do, like horseback riding. Sure. And yeah. just straight up running and At one point, fighting, somebody like in a arts. white cloak uh, assassinates somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's you got to be real careful when you're. Oh, at the, oh, he's dead. Oh, he's actually. Oh, that dead. was real. Oh. Okay, but that was pretty cool though too, because he just did that like eagle. Okay, he passed the torch. All eagle, right, we're okay, good. Okay, we're good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, it was fake. Let's move on. <laughs> anyway, all right. What I think we really need to get into: what are the events? This is the big deal. The whatever game opening ceremony, whatever events. What events take place in the 2020 Gaming Olympics? Ready? Yes. My, here's my first one. Ready? The Hyrule Meter Dash. The Hyrule Meter Dash. The meter's in there just because it makes it sound a little bit Sure, 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 sure. So, it is uh, uh, the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, the okay. N64 one, 
and you start on one end of Hyrule, and it's a speed run just literally <laughs> whatever, across whatever the farthest, the farthest point, point is. away was. But here's the thing. It's like 30 people all streaming at the same time, and their screen is real big like a Zoom meeting, like okay. all the teeny tiny things. And then as people get just like mathematically ruled out, he will not be able to catch up from his <laughs> distance. Their screen disappears. Ooh. And slowly the, like the leaders they get gr- grow, larger grow larger and larger. And then and you have larger. two screens yeah. at the end. And then finally neck comes and neck down. links. Yes. And we see these master speed runners <laughs> at the height of their craft. Going through all the ridiculous. Yes. And here's the, here's yeah. the thing is it's a, we're not recording you. You don't get to try over and over and over again. This isn't a you going for the world record. This is, we say go and you go. And if yeah. you mess up, sucks hey, to be sucks. you, man. You Should've... just you just botched it for get, your country. Get the official t- uh, lo- uh, uh, tagline is get good. Get good. <laughs> <laughs> the 2020 Gaming Olympics. Get good, noob. A bunch of people's homes, 2020. Get good. Get good. <laughs> but the, just this whole idea, again, because in my brain, it's all live streaming. Okay. Just this whole idea of... It t- starting out with a crap ton of tiny yeah, screens, yeah. but right off the bat, because they botched their immediate jump or their immediate back triangle flip over. Yeah, thing the, the weird glitch it. where yeah, they go through, where the, they go go through the world. Yeah, break through they a cutscene. They that. Half of them disappear immediately. Oh, man. And everybody just grows. In that case, yeah, I'd get like 200 competitors up there. That'd be so cool, You just have man. all these little things just blinking out as you go. Yes. Oh, that'd be super cool. Yeah. So, obviously, I went in a different direction. I still yeah. had live events. Oh, I'm really excited for this because we're going to go totally different direction. Totally that. different yes, directions. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, synchronized dance dance revolution routines. Ooh. Not just like completing the thing actual dancing while playing dance dance revolution i don't i don't care if you're the best play at the fastest speed of whatever song that's definitely part of the scoring but also i want to see your your like your choreography the amount of like if you can do real high jumps or something while also can oh, like okay. we got how can you make it happen one. like how can you still play the game to the like the best of your ability while also being i mean it'd be like a root like a like a floor gymnastics routine or something it, where it's like demonstrate or ice skating demonstrate to me your skill of the sport but also your choreography and also your artistic nature of how of the routine you put together so but specifically in dance dance revolution with japanese like uh, uh te- <laughs> techno songs see i had I do, I do, yeah, I do, some japanese I do, edm going on in the background I had a very similar idea to replace the gymnastic routines, but it's just dance. And it yeah, is, okay. what routine can, can you come too. up with that you pick a song and just dance, and whatever it is, whatever movements you do, you have to still get, still gotta a get the perfect motions. score. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the same motions. Oh, just the well, controller yeah. has to go the same direction. That's what or, I mean. Like You have to put yeah. the controller in the right spot. The controller has to register that you have done whatever move it is. Other than that... You can do whatever routine you want. Yeah, exactly. In this game, as and your score in the game Man. has to be really good, but also your routine is judged by that sounds a super panel fun. Yeah, actual like dance judges. Man, I like yours because having these people do like spin kicks and then landing back on <laughs> yeah. the arrows on the again. actual arrows. And yes, I mean maybe there's like bonus. Like you could have not just like one or two side by side but like hey we've got eight machines out there and we've got a big like group of people doing oh man like just how many maybe that's an extra thing like the more people you have in your squad oh i don't know yes. the more the, the, the more difficult it is of course because you got more people to, to have to be good at it man i think that would be i want to see this i don't care about the olympic i just want to see <laughs> yeah, this now is, i, mean, I that, bet that i be bet very, you there's a thing cool. somewhere where it's people create actual dance routines to ddr and i need to watch that right now I've watched the DDR like world championships. They're insane. Okay. But it's obviously people just playing the game as yes. well as possible. I I want this to happen. Okay, here's my next one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So in old arcades, not old arcades, modern arcades really, there are fighting games in which you get in kind of like VR gear uh-huh. and then somebody else does as well. Sure. And then you guys are fighting each other. That but I want it to be whatever fighting game is top tier right now. So like Smash Brothers, like Evo, okay. but not but not with a controller. You are VR this character, <laughs> and we are. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking of like Meta Knight's like drill spin attack, and like just vomit just... all over the place uh, as the world spins around. Uh, 
of you of course don't actually move the same oh, way okay that that's does, what i was imagining like, i was like how do i do that your movements trigger the effects gotcha. or whatever else of the creature but you are the, seeing the from a first person you were seeing from a first person perspective uh, of the character yeah there's a lot of throw so up on that one we, we there's a splash the- zone in the audience <laughs> for that one we see the people in their home trying to like fight and do whatever they need to uh. do but then like Ryu does his spin kick in the air <laughs> and after the person is like oh jeez oh, oh dear lord <laughs> all of a sudden uh. very static characters become the most popular <laughs> S- who has the most who has the most uh standard fighting move set but what also be cool so my other idea in this would be to take something that has a, a little bit more realism based something like tekken tekken a lot of the stuff in tekken is based off of actual martial arts sure yeah actual martial art fighting moves and kind of translating that into a legitimate vr fighting like actual game. fighters and- yeah and actually having these people attempt to fight one another sure in this virtual space and seeing how that goes like how much would it actually translate when you're not afraid of getting hit and hurt right when you're... how much more daring are you going to be with oh, your attacks so man. yeah there was i remember going to gameworks at arizona mills mall when <laughs> i was young day, and yeah. they had a vr uh, uh fighting game i think yeah. it was maybe even like soul caliber or tekken or something maybe Te- i think tekken where you would just stand on it. You had no gear on. You just stood on this specific spot. And if you punched, your character punched you. Yeah. So, yeah, just that. But And that was like 15 years ago. So Yeah. Maybe they they have to have the technology. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that sounds great. All right. Um, synchronized VR. I'm going to go similar to you, Ooh. but with something like super hot. Oh, dude. Where, that would be incredible. Where, or, or, like, or teams fighting against each other in super hot. Where somehow, I mean, you would have to make it work where the time could move or something. I don't know how. It, I mean, you could make that work, actually. Maybe it's like turn-based super hot or something. Like, you get five seconds. You don't get time to play, and you just have to make your move. And then the other person gets to move. Man, now that I'm thinking about this, <laughs> turn-based combat, but in real life with your <laughs> VR. But yeah, or or you just have like, you know, get through this level. Or it's a randomized kind of uh, roguelike type thing where your team has to go through a level specifically and it's vr so you see them out on this big field and i don't know we see like on a screen what they're actually doing and we can just see them running around on a big open space it'd be like it'd be like a like motion capture and we can see on a big screen or on our computer the actual thing that's happening in real life that would be or in the game and yeah i want to see like it basically be a test of like squad tactics yeah and but also coming you know dealing with the super hot slow motion and you only things only move when you move things like that and that could apply to a lot of games i think absolutely to yes. just being able to uh, it'd be like you know bridge crew star trek bridge crew but a little more visually interesting <laughs> instead of you just say, i mean that could be one what too, about course, like a star but... trek bridge crew i'm making this up as we go now a <laughs> sure. star trek bridge crew but versus so you are in yeah, a there space you go. fight and you all come to get everybody has their own ship and you're coming together and your whole crew has to fight. Yeah, we're we're part of the Federation. Ride. That team's uh, Romulans or something. That'd be so. I would <laughs> yeah. Watch the crap oh out man. Of that man. Dang. To actually have like ship captains and th- to me that would be like huge That'd esports be super hit. Cool. Yeah. Because you'd have that like the players that you could say he is the team captain. This, yeah, they all have their this roles. Guy, yeah, they, they he, traded he's, characters. He's, yeah, they he's, need this. He's they, the best security officer in the biz right now. You know. Yeah, that would be so your translatable to real roles. sports. Oh, dang, that would be super cool. Yeah, it'd be like your basketball team. Yes, like your positions. Yes, absolutely. Dang. Oh man, I know that esports kind of has that right now, but there is a gap in between the sitting in front of a computer and just playing the game right right and there is team communication right Lego legends has positions you have jugglers right. and you know m- right mids but and... to actually have these very distinct roles yeah. and titles plus on the these strategy roles. of like dealing with so like you could try diplomacy yeah it, oh man it essentially dang i we i we went into this i was thinking it's a big joke thing but now i'm thinking it's like a it's like a murder mystery or something where you have specific goals on each squad that you want to accomplish oh, yeah. or like Civ where there's different ways to yeah. win and you have to like, you could uh, negotiate, you could win by destruction. You could win by taking hostages or something like that and making them capitulate. Like, and all the right. Way that, the way that British sports work uh, is that 
it each like it's not just the amount of wins that you have. A lot of times, it's how many points you score. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the World Cup and stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you win three games but lose the fourth, but in all of them they were very, very. Close, I mean, that's how like baseball works too. No, in baseball it's just it's wins. The amount but of wins. You, I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's not the amount of runs you score. That's true. So, but in this, it could be just a look. Nobody wins this game, but the amount of points that you get depending on what your team's goals were. Yeah. Then we'll start totaling those up as the season continues, and that's it's like, how we're going to. It's be like measuring. model UN, yes, but Star Trek VR. I would watch the crap out of this, man. Uh, TM. This is going to be another thing that happens uh, that we do not get we, credit I for. Know. Oh my! Gosh. Everything cool was originally on a on a episode of the Nerdy Gritty guys. Yep, that's really what everything. It is. Okay, here's my next Olympic one. Ready? Okay, yeah, the Tetris relay. The t- Oh, man, I love it already. <laughs> I love it already. So you get teams of I, I, 10 was what I wrote down, but just sure, whatever. whatever. You cannot see your teammate's screen. Each person plays for like one minute, and then it goes to person number two. Oh. And they pick up immediately okay. where person one left off, and you just keep going. And it just keeps cycling through immediately to the next person playing Tetris. And your team just goes in a circle. So you okay. don't just have to be good at Tetris. You have to be Johnny on the spot, really on your feet, with picking up what is happening. Wherever, yeah, immediately coming into the... Yeah. I, I imagine this in real life. And so you have a relay team. <laughs> it's a physical thing as well as a mental thing. You have to figure out where the pieces are going, but you also have to be the fastest team at getting those puzzle, pe- those tetraminos into space, into the right space. And then somehow, you know, whatever, then you get a line and it gets pushed off of your tower or something like that. Man, Man if we want to do this in real life, now I'm thinking to myself, it'd be really interesting to have like a, one person playing Tetris, but then he could call out... I need this piece. And then there's a person who has to run to a bank of these physical pieces. Sure. Picks one up, runs back to him and drops it into a box or whatever. Right. I think you would need like, you can know the current and the next piece because Tetris, you have to like go on the fly. But I'm saying like he could choose whatever piece he wanted as often as that person can run back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Because the the, the physical element, like the speed element would definitely Because eventually that guy's going to get exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to get exhausted. Yeah. Maybe you have a team of four or something. Yeah. And so you're going to get those pieces more slowly as time progresses or whatever else. Dang. That's a good one. Yeah. I like that. I got a couple of this on on these now. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about it. But my, my original idea was just, again, for because me, everybody's at home, everybody's live streaming. You're just sitting in front of the computer and there's a timer counting down to when it's your turn again. And it's a it's a 10 minute timer, I guess a nine minute timer every time because there's a team of 10. Sure. And it's counting down and you know in this many seconds it's coming back to you. Uh, and then the screen just shows up. So nervous. And you have to start. What's it going right, to be? Wherever that piece is, you have to I start love it. right there. Yeah. Oh, dang. I mean, now I'm thinking about it. We could easily do a class like classic arcade games but physical version like i could imagine the original uh donkey kong being an actual you have to like run up these like <laughs> jump over barrels and how is that not a reality tv show right that now feel, it feels like the like wipeout game Warrior. or like yeah it feels yeah. essentially like that where they just uh, an obstacle yeah, but course the, the but if you recreate video game dig dug it, or yes you know just a burger time <laughs> i don't know <laughs> creating some kind of just a, a real world analog man uh pac-man Mm. pac-man's an easy one i think anyway that was a good one um uh i had one that was just generic speed running i think would be really fun to do of course right right. um but uh i think a big one in this okay i'll tell you this isn't a video game but crane games massive real world crane games where you have to like I don't know what exactly you're picking up or whatever. Maybe there's some element to it. And it's not just pick up a thing and drop it in. But I saw this. I'm taking this from uh, so PAX every year does the Omegathon. Omegathon. Yeah. And there was one year they, they showed it in um the their their PAX show the, yeah. or the Penny Arcade TV show where the final event was some uh, uh, the, the last couple people had to do a crane game. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's fun. That can be. But it's in front of thousands of people. And you have this entire amphitheater there now just like on the edge of their seat. Is that, is he going to be able to pick up this thing? Is it going to like that tension of, is that thing going to make it all the way to the corner and drop in just gets amplified by thousands, millions of people watching this now. (laughs) I want to see that in real life. 
just that tension of that, yeah, just the, the claws <laughs> descending, and it's like oh. it's actually gone over the object you want. And you're right, like, right. Oh. Oh. And then it and begins then it... the clasp. Doesn't pick it up. Doesn't pick it up, and it's just the biggest like disappointment in the world. Oh man. Uh, I think that would just be like a, a sheer like like tension kind of thing. Cause you know, I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, it'd be such a quick kind of thing in the, in the Olympic sports. A lot of it's you know lo- slow burn. You're watching a race happen, and right, you know there's right. obviously very competitive moments, but just that like, can you pick up this thing? And different things are different difficulties, but more points or something like that. Or I don't know. I think that would be a really fun fun just event to watch. Well, on the note of slow burn. My next one was kind of another relay, more like a rally, but the Sim Euro Truck Driver Rally. So here's the way it works. You want to get, it's called Euro Truck because that's the one that I know, but you start from Spain and you want to get to like the eastern part of Russia. Yeah. Literally across two continents. Yeah, yeah. But you are delivering to, you know, the east of France and then your goal is to have your relay partner pick it up and then that person sure. is going to deliver it to the next leg and it's this this huge long sim run but it's in very real sim game style where you need to get gas you need to make sure you're maintaining your tires you need to make sure that you are doing everything you need to do to make sure this happens to me this would be one of those things where i once asked a friend like why is racing interesting and he's like Yes, we know it's the same thing over and over again, but there's always this knowledge that if you step away for three seconds, it can make the biggest you can difference. miss the biggest thing in the yeah. world, yeah. and so you were glued to the television that because the tension is literally constant, and it would be like that in this. Yeah, if you blew a tire, who knows how much time that's going to lose you? Right. Did you pack enough spares? Did like what 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 ratio are you going for your gas weights or whatever else? Like how is this going to work? And I think that could be a really long like slow burn interesting okay game. i have something exact i didn't come up with this before but i have a replacement game euro truck sounds okay fine real life <laughs> you know terrain whatever i want ultra sim though Uh-oh. i want desert bus <laughs> do you know about desert <laughs> bus yes, desert the bus. game in which you drive from tucson arizona to las vegas in real time yes it's in a bus that has bad uh, it takes eight hours of continuous driving <laughs> But it has a bad alignment, so if you take your, you, you have to continually, just slightly nudge the right. gate, and if you don't, you'll go off to the side and break down and have to restart. And uh, I want that. <laughs> I want that in the game. I want to watch eight hours of somebody driving to Las Vegas. Uh, a desert bus is usually a um, like a fundraiser. There's game a fundraiser. It's from a. Yeah. Did you know it's from a Penn and Teller, uh, compilation of games. And no that idea. they sponsored called smoke and mirrors and it was in direct response to like politicians saying games are too violent <laughs> like specifically that. desert bus was because it's just super wonderful. boring and ultra realistic <laughs> and uh yeah so uh that's what i want to see yeah euro truck's fine whatever yeah i want to see sure. desert bus make it happen <laughs> uh my last one is uh kind of an incomplete one but i think it could be great i want to see like surgeon simulator or quap or yes. or octodad where it takes maybe this is somehow i mean obviously oh, not a surgeon simulator good. but i want to see a team of people have to work together to overcome this super ridiculous physics like simultaneously thing. right 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 and so maybe it's like i don't know like with octodad it's each person has a specific limb and yeah. they have to like and it's and you know uh speed running or just uh uh here's an obstacle course or something like that who can work the best i am bread would be a good one for this where you just have to overcome the obstacle course or the randomized level or something and be the best at coordination and also physics physics based puzzling and it would be still hilarious it'd be yes a combination of impressive and hilarious i would watch the yeah, crap 100%. out of that especially because there's supposed to be hilarity to these games yeah but when you get like two masters and Octodad that would be doing this together, or like maybe one person is the left hand in Surgeon Simulator and the other person's the right hand, and then you see these people who have put in a bajillion yeah. hours of yeah. practice and they're doing this flawlessly, then it's just astonishing. Right. It's like the uh the speed run, the two players, one controller speed run of of Ikigura. Uh, I haven't seen that one, but I've seen um Goldeneye oh yeah one person controls movement the other person controls like vision and shooting 
and it's just like speed running that game is really cool to watch but that's it that adds this new layer of complexity of just, and it's just so impressive to see and so i think that would be amazing to watch people do i had it backwards ikigura is one person two controllers oh. and they oh. they beat the game with one hand on each controller of the arcade and it's ridiculous oh, man, that's awesome yeah yeah that's awesome my last one is also kind of an incomplete one but uh for me it was the first to a goal of some sort of like animal crossing or um super casual relaxed. super casual game but now it's a race what's the other one stardew valley or something okay. like that so uh, in my brain first it was animal crossing it was like the first to get this amount of space in your house like first to get three rooms in your house okay you are ha- you are limited by the fact that you have to wait a full day in between each no you, you would you not time be travel that is that allowed you would be able to time okay. travel and All do right. whatever else you need like that i think and stardew valley would be a really good one for this yeah and so your whole goal now is to do what you need to do as fast as humanly possible there is still like rng involved in this sure on what island you get to or whatever else right right and your goal is just as fast as you can try and get to that goal and do whatever you need to do because obviously to be able to get the best x you need to complete the museum or the sure. shop or whatever and so finding the most streamlined path to be able to get that all what exactly you, you, what you start need. with 10 villagers first one to annoy them all away <laughs> <laughs> you just run around hitting them with with bug nets for for Forever. a couple hours yeah 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 all right well guys that's the gaming olympics coming that's the gaming nbc olympics. 2020 yeah tm on all of it tm it's us yes thank you jeff very keely much. reach out we'll, we'll we'll make it happen thank you very much for listening thank you guys so much for all of your support we want to say another huge thank you to granger for the use of our theme song all my friends have wi-fi and some of my neighbors do too off of the album dear sam it's a really good album go check out their stuff yeah uh, also uh, something else to check out we've got a youtube channel uh if you happen to be somebody who's not listening to this on our youtube channel there's if you and if you are into video games uh we have a majority is let's play a lot of, a lot of gameplay going on right now uh as of this coming uh going live we've got let's see my playthrough of the last of us has started it's about a week into it now i played it on hard difficulty this time which Ooh. i kind of forgot at the cer- at a certain point because i just got used to the difficulty yeah. so it, uh, yeah anyway so that's that's going on our playthrough of days gone is going on uh and i think you are still doing yours is still final, final fantasy 7, seven. Yep. uh that's happening as well as we are doing weekly kind of recap commentary on what the summer game fest mm-hmm. is happening right now and so a bunch of gaming digital events are happening we're just kind of talking about what's going on as well as we have some other videos like punthlies and uh, uh, what else have we got going on? We've always got stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, man, there. our June Punt is coming up. I'm excited about that. It's coming that. up. And, of yeah. course, some of this you get early access to if you are part of our Patreon. Right, like uh, uh, a trivia thing that Fox and I did recently uh, with yeah, the man, I forgot Star about Wars that. How and Lord of the Rings Trivia Pursuits yeah. and whatnot. So, yeah, so that, yeah. Was, that was really fun. So we've got a lot of content up there uh, for you. Um, so, yeah, please go check it out because we also have thousands of videos that are not currently the live playthroughs. Thank you so much for listening. And remember that when you share, when you tell people about this, it means the world to us. But of course, always remember that save games, save lives. See you next week.